What's up guys, in today's video I'd like to discuss some of the different paths in Reverend Insanity and speculate which cultivation path is the best. According to the Reverend Insanity wiki, a path is a part or an aspect of the Great Tao, which was painstakingly explored by Goo Masters walking down an unknown and oftentimes perilous path which is later over generations changed and refined. To be able to be called a path, it has to have a clear direction, like an element, fire, a prospect of reality, time, or life, blood, or a specific effect, transformation. Furthermore, the path needs to cover the basic aspects like attack, defense, healing, movement, storage, and investigation. In addition to this, in the Gu world, the five most popular paths are the five elements in traditional Chinese feng shui, metal, wood, fire, water, and earth. In addition to these, there are some dying paths that are still relatively common, but acknowledged as falling out of favor due to various limitations such as scarce materials for refinement, expensive development, or technical flaws in the later stages of cultivation. Think conflicting Tao marks in regards to transformation path. Now as to which is the best path, it's probably Heaven Path due to its all-encompassing ability of bridging the gap between all other paths. Even if you wanted to eventually reach rank 9 yourself and cultivate Heaven Path, you would need to pick an actual path first and foremost to reach a level that would enable you to ascend to an immortal and start acquiring Heaven Path Dao marks. So, with the assumption that you transmigrated into the Goo world and have background knowledge of the existing paths and their strengths and weaknesses, I'd like to cover which is the best path to cultivate for various goals you'd like to accomplish. Before I get into it though, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you all so much for your love and support in this channel, and while I'm not quite ready to dedicate my content solely to Reverend Insanity, for the time being, I'm happy to produce one or two videos a week covering interesting parts of the novel. Thank you. I've seen this thread on the subreddit asking which path would you, the reader, cultivate, and most of the answers are thinking a little bit too impractically. So let's settle one thing first. If you were to transmigrate, there's a chance you wouldn't even be born into a Goo Master sect. It's possible plenty of past transmigrators were transferred to a mortal family and died as mortals. So in that case, if you really wanted to become a Goo Master despite that, You'd have to travel the world looking for an inheritance as a traveling merchant or something. That's quite a risk on its own, and realistically, if you had the guts to search for this kind of fortuitous encounter, you would be doing it in the real world, as opportunity to rise up in the real world does exist if you're brave enough and have the energy to be constantly chasing after it. So unless you're already pursuing similarly risky pursuits in this life, chances are you wouldn't be doing that in your next. With that out of the way, again, even if you were born into a Goo Master sect or a Northern Plains tribe, you'd most likely not have many options in choosing your vital Goo, as the Goo Master economy is pretty stale between most sects not having the funds to use Treasure Yellow Heaven and the existing competition between sects that are in close proximity to each other. That isn't to say that you can't choose your own path, but if you're already thinking that you're going to cultivate, I don't know, Dark Path, you may be out of luck if that isn't widely studied in your village. From the setting in the beginning of the novel, we see a lot of common paths such as water, ice, and snow path, enslavement path, wood and earth path, and etc. So I think it's safe to assume those are the norms for southern border. We don't know too much about the other regions in terms of mortal cultivation as the Northern Plains arc was mainly focused on the might of enslavement path and by the time we started meeting significant characters in Northern Plains we were already entering the Goo Immortal world, which seems to have a much bigger variety of paths cultivated. Sword path, blade path, light path, dark path, etc. I don't think these were touched on much in terms of mortal cultivation as, in a sense, path restrictions lessen up when you're an immortal as long as your vital goo is set before you ascend, because in that case, your tribulations should on average cultivate your desired path for you. And that should be feasibly accomplishable as it has been stated that while difficult, it is possible to change your vital goo, so your starting path is critical for your development up to rank 5 where, if you wish to ascend, 
you have time to plan out your truly desired path based on any inheritances you discover or immortal goo you happen to have refined early on for whatever reason. Assuming that I was born into a goo master sect and had the opportunity of picking one of the five elements, I would most likely go with metal or water path. Water path is useful, especially in the eastern sea area as your environment will likely be mostly water anyway and most likely the goo in water path are easily compatible with ice and snow path, opening up the greatest variety of options to me for the greatest versatility. While as a mortal, dowel marks on your own body aren't as important, there are still dowel marks on the mortal goo themselves, which I believe would result in an easier time in forming killer moves with a large assortment of water, ice, and snow path goo worms. Metal Path, according to the RI Wiki, is known for having high defensive capabilities, but is also recognized as having some of the highest offensive abilities within the most popular paths. In a world that is known for its encouragement of violence to settle conflict, I believe Metal Path is a great path to cultivate in terms of self-preservation. While I don't think it's used that often in the novel, I can see it easily being compatible with Blade Path or Sword Path when ascending to Immortal, and that your merits in your attainment level in Metal Path would enable a newly ascended Immortal to either keep cultivating Metal Path or quickly pick up Sword Path. While I'm on the topic of mortal versus immortal cultivation by the way, if this really were me being transmigrated into the goo world, no matter what path I pick, I would definitely not ascend to immortal. You could peacefully live out the rest of your life, sitting at the peak of rank 5 with astonishing combat capabilities and live quite comfortably with few to push you around. As a lone cultivator, you could leave if whatever city you are in were facing disaster and should you unfortunately encounter an immortal, be polite and hope they don't decide to kill you. Most likely, however, unless you were the head of a clan, you wouldn't encounter many immortals anyway. They're simply too rare, and they're focusing on their own calamities and tribulations. Personally, I would highly encourage this way of survival in the goo world to anyone else too. There's no need to put yourself in the amount of pressure that Fang Yun does to reap at least 60% of the benefits. Fang Yun is our epic hero, who yearns for true freedom. But ultimately, someone who wasn't insane like him could simply mind his own business and stay off the radar to avoid being bothered by people significantly more powerful. But if you truly did want to be like Fang Yun and cultivate to rank 9, it would largely depend on your aptitude. If you have low aptitude, I think cultivating strength path until you can raise your aptitude would be best due to its low primeval essence requirements. At that point, you would need to cultivate whichever path is available to you via your own connections and inheritances. Of course, you wouldn't intrinsically know where to find inheritances or know of future events just like our main hero, so the chances of your own survival in the goo world are entirely up to you, and I would highly recommend allying yourself with Righteous Path sects before going neutral and or becoming a lone cultivator later. Cultivating to rank 9 will undoubtedly require encountering lifespan goo, as not even being a time path goo immortal can extend your lifespan without significant drawbacks. With the understanding that you have limited time, I'd prepare while you are still rank 5, using as much time as you can, gaining attainment levels in refinement path. As a rank 5 goo master, you won't need to worry about calamities or tribulations. Yet, Income shouldn't be a huge problem for you either, and with Central Continent's Refinement Path competition and sects, you should be able to study and advance in this path fairly smoothly up to a point. Once your progress as a Rank 5 Refinement Path Goo Master has reached a stalling point, only then should you ascend to Rank 6 and cultivate Refinement Path primarily with a Refinement Path Vital Goo. Logically, with this skill set, you should be able to comfortably join any famous sect with your level of skill and be nurtured with all the materials you would need to continue gaining attainment levels, and your work as a refinement path master should provide enough income to deal with your calamities and tribulations, on top of the help you would likely receive by integrating into a super force or sect. In addition, Reasonably, you could quit whichever sect you wanted as long as you stayed in the Righteous Path and continued developing your skills all the way up to rank 8. My logic focusing on Refinement Path is based on support and stability. 
Most people would want a good relationship with you, and few would try to suppress your capabilities as long as you were neutral to helping everybody equally, and few people would feel threatened by your advancement in this path as it's not necessarily a combat-focused path. However, in this time, you would be free to cultivate any other path on the side, so in a sense, you should still be able to have your own methods of smashing any other immortal who is one or more ranks below you. Despite the solid plan, in your ascension to rank 9, you would still face many of the same gatekeeping that other prospective pseudo-venerables have faced. But with my limited understanding of the novel, as I'm only in the mid-1000s, I imagine that eventually gaining access to Heaven Dalmarks and Heaven Path would be easiest for someone with a high attainment level in Refinement Path. And by focusing on this skill specifically, you could refine whatever goo you wanted in the future for the purpose of using those non-conflicting Dalmarks. Your side path, whatever combat path you cultivate, largely doesn't matter in my opinion, because as long as you can raise your attainment level to around Great Grandmaster, you could start mimicking the desired effects of other paths. One of the good examples of this would be Blazing Heaven Demonus, who was able to revive from zombie form back to human. By using fire path methods, she was able to mimic the flames of Nirvana, thereby imitating the effects of human path by bringing life into the world. Therefore, in your main path beside refinement path, I would continue to encourage you to cultivate whatever path is easiest based on your situation, whether that's one with abundant and cheap resources or one that you learned about in via a complete inheritance. Remember, just as there is no strongest goo, there is no strongest path, only the strongest goo immortal. Personally though, I'd be chilling out in Shang Clan City living a life of luxury while doing side missions here and there for income. The clan's backed by immortals and is critical for Southern Border's economy, so it likely isn't going anywhere soon. And even if it does get destroyed in the future, there's no point in worrying about that when my lifespan isn't even guaranteed to be extended. Even if the city were to eventually face destruction in my lifetime, it's the same fate if I can't manage my own tribulations. After all, even if you're lucky enough to reach rank 6, it's pretty much a mad dash to rank 8 and searching for a fragment of the immemorial 9 heavens before your life can even be remotely peaceful again. If you think I'm wrong in this assessment, let me know what you think in the comments. So far, I think I've done a pretty good job in reading everyone's personal takes, and I really appreciate the high-level engagement I'm getting on these videos. Do you guys have any special plans to make a certain lesser cultivated path flourish over the most common paths? And how will you start your cultivation journey in a way to start off on this path? Would you chase after eternal life just like Fang Yun, or would you attempt to find yourself a comfortable position in a high-level Gu Master sect? Anyway, that's all I got for today. If you haven't already done so, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. In my attempt to escape Ordinary Abyss, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and try to keep a balance between talking about Reverend and Sanity content in addition to my fascination with real-life phenomena. So subscribe if you're interested in either or both of those types of content. I am the content savant. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.